Hello and welcome back to the Facilities Layout Lecture. And so the question I suppose that should come to your mind first before anything else is who really cares about the facility layout, uh, especially from the robotics point of view? Uh, and I, I would I would argue the answer is pretty much everybody, uh, especially if you're a systems integrator, in that you want to make sure you understand how the company is doing their processing and their facility layout in general anyway, so that you can produce a solution that fits in as seamlessly and cleanly as possible. Uh, if you have a customer and their facility layout is just all over the place, kind of like what you see on the screen now, then you can probably put whatever you want in and it will have zero impact. However, if you don't put in the right type of facility layout for your little corner of the world and they have very intentionally and specifically uh, gone after a different solution, uh, you you could seriously disrupt their product productivity, their efficiency, uh, you, you could potentially bring everything to a halt uh, if you're not careful. In general, and there's going to be a lot of terminology out there in the different uh, classes and in different books that you find in the different uh, philosophies that exist, in general and in no real specific order, there, there are a few different ways you can approach how products flow through a cell or through a factory even. They can go through by process. They can go by product or product family. And so a product is an individual product. A product family would be uh, different sizes maybe. Uh, so think about shirts or pants. You have different size shirts and pants. Uh, it might be all the same style of shirt or st same style of pants, but you'll have within the product family um, a 32 inch waist, a 33 inch waist, a 34 inch lace waist. You'll have a, a 29 inch inseam, 30, 31, 32, so on and so forth. And so that's product versus product family. A lot of smaller job shops will do things by process. So they will put all the milling machines in one place and anything that has to be processed by a milling machine has to move over to one of the milling machines. Anything that is done on a lathe has to go over to the lathe area. And so it's really a departmental level segregation of, of, the pro, of the machines and the equipment. And then you can have all sorts of weird hybrids uh, out there. And so the left set of boxes and arrows is more along the lines of the process view of the world in that I have an item that, come, that has to have this done or that done and so it can go there or there and then it has to go to here and it's not a, a always a clean flow through things you might have products from over here or here going all the way over um, in this case from here down to the bottom one and so there's no clear delineation there's no clear sequencing and for a company that is a small company or at least a company that has a small production rate a lot of times this makes more sense because it's easier to have the same or similar equipment next to each other and and having dedicated organization for a single product is not always the most viable thing because as a small company as a small manufacturer uh, pr production wise you're probably going to see a lot of changes and a lot of variation and you're not going to want to have to keep moving all your physical equipment around for each new product on the right side here we have uh, process blue and if I need it for a B and and a mix of them then each of them have their own instance of that machine uh, product a has its own red machine and its own green machine and as a result of that you can very easily predict the flow of, pro of products through here going over here the flow of products and ensuring that each of these pieces of equipment are main, are run at their optimal levels of utilization becomes very difficult. This is a lot easier.
Cellular manufacturing is a concept to bring all the equipment, people, and processes into a single location designed to improve efficiency, quality, and throughput. The traditional machine shop would have departments, department of multi-spindle machines, a department of single spindle machines, of grinding equipment, secondary equipment, depending on what that shop had invested in, and a material would come in and it would go to department A, and then it would sit around in a bucket until somebody came and brought it over to Department B. I'm Paul Lindsay. I'm Vice President of Sales. I've been with Campcraft since uh, 1988. What makes cellular manufacturing different from departmental structure, which is more traditional, is you get a single piece flow that starts with the first machine and finishes with the last. A cellular manufacturing approach allows you to have product finished that day. There's minimal movement of product. There isn't any redundant activities in the cell that departmental processing allows for. You get that immediate feedback. You get process feedback. You get communication between employees who are working next to each other that you don't get uh, across departments quite as easily as you do in a cell. So it, is eliminating that waste time, that lost time, the handling of moving things around from location to location are the immediate benefits from, from a cell. The long-term benefits that kind of develop over time is that, that teamwork, that camaraderie, and that focus that comes from optimizing a singular product in a cell. By design, things are optimized and customized for the products that are going through that cell, which improves efficiency, improves cost, ultimately gets you quality levels you don't really see in a different environment. That was a, a brief overview on the, the general concept of cell, cellular manufacturing. Does touch heavily on some of the concepts of lean and, and tries to bring a lot of those in. And that's not a good thing or a bad thing. That just is a statement. One of the things about cellular manufacturing that he did not get into, though, is some textbooks will kind of imply that Cellular manufacturing has to be more of a, of a U-cell, and it can't be a linear system. Um, I would argue it, that's not the case. You could have it either way. And so you could have a manufacturing cell where stuff comes in one end and physically leaves the far end. Um, or you could have a, a, a cellular manufacturing solution that it comes in one end, goes through the cell, and comes back out two feet to the left or to the right of where it entered. And, and the cellular side of the manufacturing phrase really is coming from the idea that you have everything you need for that manufacturing process together in one work cell instead of having to, trans instead of having to transfer the, the parts like he was mentioning from where it is in step one to halfway across the factory to step two, two thirds of the way back to step three the far end of step four, and so on. Linear flow is, is often seen in physically larger types of manufacturing solutions. Think about a, a car. It's a physically large envelope item, and you will have stuff flow through the work, cell, or the work cells, and the car will move from station to station, and you'll have processes done. The other end of that extreme is think about something like a airplane or a ship generally everything comes to wherever the the product is being made and so the flow is almost in a way backwards uh, it, it may still be a linear flow but it's all the equipment that is flowing past the static item and so i've got this labeled as the u cell or a d cell i've seen that reference and it at any more it's pick a letter it really is. Whoever you talk to, whatever consulting you, consultant you're dealing with, whatever crazy academic you're dealing with who's decided that this is the new greatest way to have things move through a cell, 
uh, we'll, we'll sign a letter to it, it seems. But generally, uh, a used cell, the idea is parts come in one side, let's say uh, the left here on the screen in the lower left corner, and it moves around this rotary table, and then they come back off on the right side. And so you can have an operator come in, drop stuff off, walk three feet to the left, pick the next one up, take that off to wherever it needs to go. And in the meantime, the robots do their thing. The table indexes, the employer comes in, puts in the next new part, takes away the last process part. And so the next time this rotates, this is empty, goes to here, and they can bring in the new part to an empty location, take away the old part. And so that's a nice clean way for the product to flow in and out of the cell does not take up a huge amount of room and depending on your your physical constraints in the in the facility that might make sense or it may make sense make sense to have it come in this end go to step one weld or process with the robot move the other robot over here uh, go to the next location and then go out the back end because it then has to go down to the far end of the factory to get painted or whatever and so it, it really becomes a, an answer of it depends. And so we got the, the U-shaped work cell here. They've got something labeled as a T-shaped. I don't remember where I found this, this diagram, but sure, we can call it T-shaped. Uh, I would call it just a branch. <laughs> but hey, what do I know? Uh, so maybe it's going from work A to B to C to D. I don't know why these arrows are there. They don't really make sense. And the downside to something like this, I would actually just make it, I would call it an L-shaped. I would have moved workstation B to the intersection of the T, gone over and down. And then at that point, the reality is it's linear. It's just the, the line has an angle in it. And so along those lines, you've then got this S or Z-shaped, which I think is even dumber. Uh, but it's basically going from workstation A to B to C to D. Hey, great. You know what? You straighten that out. It's a line. Granted, you straighten this out. It's a line. But the big issue with the U cell is product is fed in at one point and comes back out at another point. So I guess our op order of operations, now I look at this more, goes C, A, B, D. And so for our T-shaped, goes C, A, B. This is just dumb. I don't, I don't get that. And here, uh, the lines imply the sequence is A, B, C, D. And if that's the case, that's fine. But um, it's you could do that as a U cell or a linear, a straight line. The only reason you do something like this is probably because you have some kind of physical constraint in the building and the building's making you do that. And so along the lines of a U-cell, stuff is coming in from the other side of this door. It's being processed through all the steps in here. And it does, goes off and does whatever it goes off and does. Okay, we're exchanging tools, that's fine. We're gonna go weld on the product. Fake weld, fake weld. And we're gonna speed all this up. And at the same time the robots are doing their things there, there is an operator doing whatever processes need to be done here. And when this operator is done, they will go over to the other side and work over there and then Switch back and forth and back and forth. And so this way, stuff comes in through one set of doors, leaves through the other set of doors, and you have all the operations happen in here, and you don't have to worry about the operator safety because the operator never goes inside the work envelopes of the robots. They're out here on the other side of the doors. These doors are interlocked as well. And so you can have a lot happen in here and a lot of unusual crazy orientation with all this tooling that you may need and be safe 
And then finally, some other considerations you're going to want to make for your facility layout is something like safety. There's a whole module for safety and there's a bunch of videos I want you to watch related to that. But you need to think about where are there going to be gates, where are there going to be fences or other barriers to keep uh, employees from getting into an area where they can get hurt. But at the same time, you have to provide maintenance access and you have to provide raw materials and finished goods access so that you can get the parts into the cell and out of the cell. If you have a conveyor running through the middle of your cell, that takes care of your raw materials and your finished goods. And then you just want to make sure you have a way to get into the back sides of the robots or the other pieces of automation so that you can maintain them, fix them as needed. We, we talked a little bit about it in... Uh, in the session with Mike uh, Witt uh, about lockout tagout and the need for being able to do stuff like that because it is important that you make sure that the equipment can't start up without you being aware of it starting up. And if it's in a noisy environment, you got hearing protection on, you may not hear someone say, hey, Joe, about to start the machine, and all of a sudden you are potentially dead. Uh, never never a good way to finish out your work day. Um you also want to consider other traffic. Do you have things set up where people can get past the, the equipment or is the fence in a way that it looks like you should be able to get stuff through, but you can't? So hopefully this has made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching.